Although they didn't have the machine guns that would dominate much of the war, the American soldiers were armed with excellent rifles. In 1903, the U.S. military upgraded its service rifle, taking into account all they had learned from the M93 Mausers used against them in the Spanish-American War. This bolt-action rifle was chambered for a 30 caliber round fired from a five-round magazine. It would become the standard U.S. bolt-action rifle for World War I. The rifle was just under 45 inches long and weighed 8 pounds, 11 ounces. A model 1905 bayonet could be attached to the rifle, adding 16 inches of sharp steel and increasing the weight by a pound. The bayonet also had a 4-inch handle and could be used as a knife. The 1903 Springfield um, is based largely upon the Mauser rifle. Uh, in fact, uh, it's so similar to the Mauser system uh, that Mauser filed suit against the U.S. government and ended up being paid royalties for the manufacture of this rifle. There are some differences. Uh, the 1903 has a different uh, firing pin than the uh, Mauser rifle. It was, it replaced the Craig uh, Jorgensen rifle because of lessons learned during the Spanish-American War. Uh, the soldier, U.S. soldiers felt outclassed by the, the uh, Mausers that the Spanish troops were armed with because they could fire uh, so much faster. Uh, the Spanish Mauser had an internal box magazine, uh, which is what the Springfield here has. Uh, five round internal box magazine. Uh, you simply press down this follower here. Uh, there is a milled out portion in the receiver where you can uh, place a charger clip or a stripper clip as it's known. And uh, this can be loaded and fired uh, extremely quickly. Uh, it's a beautiful weapon, uh, wonderfully made, uh, very, very accurate. And this was produced and used uh, right up through World War II. Uh, as a matter of fact, many of these Springfields found themselves used as sniper rifles uh, up to the early stages of Vietnam. Uh, the O3 Springfield fires a uh, 30 caliber cartridge. Uh, something you've heard, the 30-06 round, that in fact refers to a 30 caliber bullet uh, developed in 1906. Uh, the O3 Springfield, when paired against the Mauser, uh, they operate virtually the same. Uh, the ammunition for the O3 Springfield was updated in that they uh, adopted a uh, rounded boat tail bullet uh, based upon what the Germans had developed for their uh, 7.92 by 57 millimeter cartridge. Uh, it is different than the uh, Mauser rifle that the Germans were armed with in World War I, the G98, in that it is uh, short. This has only a 24 inch barrel. Uh, that's because at the time it was developed in 1903, this was intended to replace both the infantry weapon and the cavalry weapon because there was a tendency to adopt a shorter carbine for both infantry and cavalry use. One soldier who put this weapon to good use was a man that General Black Jack Pershing would later call the greatest single hero in the American forces. First Lieutenant Sam Woodfill was an expert marksman who had been hunting since the age of 10. He put his extraordinary talent to work clearing out machine gun nests. Woodfill and his regiment joined in the Argonne Offensive against the Hindenburg Line. The Hindenburg Line included trenches, concrete bunkers, and heavy belts of barbed wire, tunnels for troop movement, and deadly machine gun emplacements. The German High Command believed it could not be broken. Woodfill described the offensive as 46 days of rain and mud and death and general hell such as no American army had ever faced. In the early morning fog of October 12th, 
1918, Woodfill led his company in a long line toward the village of Cunell. As they crossed a field, the fog lifted and three machine gun nests let loose. While his men found cover, Woodfill took his rifle and began to stalk the machine gunners. He focused on the church tower first. He couldn't see the gunner, but he aimed behind the flash of the machine gun. He fired, and the machine gun was silenced. His next target was the abandoned stable. Again, the gunner was hidden, but again, Woodfield shot where the gunner should be, and the machine gun went silent. To reach the nest in the forest, he had to stalk around to the side, taking cover in holes created by shelling. One hole concealed a pocket of mustard gas, which he inhaled before realizing it. He avoided a fatal dose, but now his eyes were stinging and vision was blurry. Still, he moved on, creeping quietly until he was hidden from view, but in a spot where he could spy the face of the gunner in the third nest. Woodfill fired and the man went down. Another took his place and he fired again. Two more took up the machine gun, each killed by a single shot from Woodfill. Finally, the remaining two Germans fled. His men looked on with awe. Woodfill signaled them to move up. He then returned to the hunt. Each nest he cleared improved the odds of his men surviving that day. He found two more machine gun nests past Cunell, and he took the five-man crew operating each with five well-placed shots. He was forced to dive into a trench when another nest opened up on him, and he found himself face to face with two German soldiers. Woodfield shot the first with his pistol, but when he turned to fire on the second, his gun jammed. Woodfill had taken out five machine gun nests and the two Germans in the trench without taking an injury. But the exposure to the mustard gas took him out of the fighting. He and his men rejoined the rest of the American forces, but he was quickly moved to a hospital. And by the time he had recovered, the war was over. In February 1919, General Pershing, the commander of the U.S. forces in Europe, presented First Lieutenant Woodfill with the Medal of Honor. Facing Woodfill were Germans who, when not manning machine guns, were carrying bolt-action Mausers, labeled the Gewehr Model 1898 or the G98, the standard service rifle of the German Army. The G98 was designed by Peter Paul Mauser, whose earlier work had so impressed the Americans that they had copied it for their Model 1903. One of the most popular military and sporting arms ever developed, over 5 million G98 rifles were eventually produced. This well-built rifle was sturdy, powerful, and accurate. The G98 held a five-round internal magazine and used an innovative controlled feed bolt action. The only complaint about the M98 was its slow rate of fire due to the design of the bolt and to the smaller magazine. No one made that complaint about the British standard arm, the short Magazine Lee Enfield No. 1 Mark III. The SMLE could fire 30 to 40 rounds per minute in the hands of a trained soldier. The SMLE Mark III was the most recent in an extremely successful series of Lee Enfield rifles. The S in SMLE stands for short, indicating the shorter barrel, 25 inches, which made for a much lighter weapon. It fired the 303 caliber British cartridge. The standard rifle of the French was longer and heavier than the SMLE and slower to load, but it had a long history of service. The French Army's Lebel Model 1886 had been cutting edge 30 years earlier designed to take advantage of the then new invention of smokeless gunpowder, the Lebel had proven itself the superior of respected arms such as the 1871 Mauser. But by the time of World War I, it had become outdated. The Lebel 1886 
was a bolt-action rifle firing an 8mm round from an 8-round magazine. Going the other direction from the SMLE Mark III, the Lebel was a long, heavy rifle and comparatively slow to reload. The slow loading was due to a serious design flaw. The Lebel's tubular magazine fitted each cartridge in a line, nose to tail. If one bullet's tip struck the primer base of the next bullet, it could explode inside the chamber. Recognizing the limitations of the Lebel Model 1886, the French introduced the Berthier rifle in 1907. The Berthier was a clip-loading rifle like the Enfields, providing a more modernized loading and firing system. But the 1907 model had only a three-round clip, reducing the overall rate of fire considerably. The French military introduced a new model in 1916 with a five-round clip. This was an obvious improvement, though some commanders preferred the eight-round Lebel 1886, which did remain the standard rifle of the French military during the war. Meanwhile, America needed more rifles of its own. The 1903 Springfields were excellent rifles, but there weren't enough of them to arm a military that had exploded in the wake of the Selective Service Act of 1917. In the years before America entered the Great War, the Winchester Repeating Arms Company and the Remington Arms Company contracted with Great Britain for the manufacture of the 303 caliber P-14 rifles. After the U.S. entered the war, the military needed rifles for its own soldiers. But rather than convert the Remington and Winchester factories to make the M1903 Springfields, which would take much more time, they decided to modify the British rifle design. The result was the M1917 Enfield, a gun patterned on the British rifle, but firing the standard US 30-06 cartridges. Also called the American Enfield, this rifle was a couple of inches longer and about half a pound heavier than the M1903 Springfield. A model 1917 bayonet added about 16 inches and a little over a pound. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.